be recording on computer, so. Okay, okay, okay. We're just seeing if it's going live. That's really interesting. Okay, I do believe it is live. So I'm very excited here this morning. Uh, well, actually this afternoon now um, to be sitting here on the sofa with Thomas Power and Penny Power for our bit chat. This is on the sofa, Thomas and Penny, which is our weekly chat show. And this is uh, number three that we've done. And let me tell you a little bit about the context of this if you're watching this. So it's called BIP Chat because BIP stands for business is personal. And I've always believed that business is personal. And that really is a philosophy I've always had. But actually about seven years ago when I was having a really difficult time in business, somebody was being a bit of a nasty person, could have used a different word. And they said, it's not personal, Penny, it's just business. And it really confronted me confronted my own values and this person in a way had a hold over me and it made me think and it's a really interesting this because it's really about our confidence here and this is what we're going to be talking a lot about today um, and our sense of self-worth it really confronted me because I thought no it, it is personal this is my business and I put everything into it and I'm very open and I'm very loving and I put everything into it that I can in business um, Anyway, as a result of that, they did me a big favor because I just thought I'll stand my ground and believe that business is personal and continue to be the person I am. So as we segue into me introducing you to um, Leslie Thomas, today, the Business is Personal chat is with VIP 100 member, Leslie Thomas. And Leslie is the money mastery coach and her real expertise and we have witnessed it in its droves and seen the impact that she has on people is all about how can you really uh, conquer the mindset around money and it's much more diverse than just let me go and get a wealth manager and learn how to make money or let me be brilliant in business in some way it's much deeper than that so Leslie it's absolutely fantastic to have you with us I'm going to put a apology to everyone that today we're not very well branded although Thomas is wearing the business's personal pin because we're actually sitting on holiday in Limington in a Waitrose and um, we're relying a lot on the internet, which is the O2 network, but we really wanted to go ahead and do this this week. So Leslie, first of all, please tell us a little bit more about you and then please do introduce your guests that you've invited that I'm very excited about. Okay, thank you very much for having me, Penny and Thomas, on your first LinkedIn Live for this BIP chat. So uh, a quick, synopsis of me. I spent 20 years working in corporate telecommunications. I began my entrepreneurial journey 10 years ago when I joined my husband in his ski property business. I decided that corporate life and having children just didn't mix. So I left to join my husband in his business, but I've always coached and mentored informally. Um, and that's very much where my passion lay. So I took the opportunity during lockdown to retrain as a business coach, to get qualified as a business coach. Um, and I specialize in money mindset. And the reason I chose to do that is because whilst I have the tools, experience and capability to go into someone's business and help them to make the changes they need to their business strategy, there'd be very little point in me doing that if they were not fully bought into why those changes needed to be made, why their business wasn't working for them in the way that they wanted to, why they weren't making the money they wanted to. So I start off very much with helping them to understand their relationship with money, where that relationship has come from, and to make the changes that they need to make to really make that relationship with money be one that works with them. And today I've invited on um, as my guest to the show, uh, Lorraine Dorgan, and Lorraine is a client of mine. I had the privilege of working with her for 10 weeks. We finished probably about a month or so ago, but we had an absolutely amazing time working together, getting to know each other and helping Lorraine to reshape the next stage of her business. 
And I've also invited along Mindy Gibbons Klein. Mindy is also a member of BIP 100. And Mindy and I have had some amazing conversations around money. Mindy truly gets what I do. She is a business owner. She, she helps people to publish their books, including yourself, Penny. So for me, having Mindy along as well as somebody who really gets the whole relationship with money and the impact it can have on us personally and within our business, I felt was a great guest to have along with a former client as well. Absolutely fantastic. And yes, um, we are actually coming in from, well, I'm in Hampshire. Leslie's in Wiltshire. Lorraine is in France and Mindy is in New York at the moment. So and now I do know Mindy very well because Mindy actually coached me and published my book, Business is Personal. And I've known Mindy for many, many years. And I'm really excited because Mindy does have a very healthy uh, attitude to business and money. And I think what we are all willing to do here for the sake of the person listening in, and this show is all about educating, supporting, empathizing with the people watching this is that we're all here to be very open with you, to sell our to tell our stories and um, help people to realize that, you know, we don't necessarily get born, but this is where Min uh, Leslie's gonna help us with all the skills that we need to um, help our businesses grow and be successful. And some of it has to be learned, but also things along the way damage us, don't they? And so, I think there's, a, there's an honesty in here. I share my story very openly in my book. Um, I've certainly had a, a challenge around my money, my tet. So, um, Leslie, let me start off with just asking you a little bit about, you know, what do you feel underpins the majority of the people that you coach around um, money and, and, and whether they're finding it easy it's and successful? It, it is a fear of having that real open and honest conversation about money. It is the impact that having a conversation around your own self-worth and self-value, because we attach so much of our own self-worth and self-value to that conversation around money, rather than actually being able to separate it. And I think the whole impact is not just around pricing, but it is around the visibility that we need to have as somebody running a business, particularly during and now hopefully post pandemic, because everything's gone online. If we are not visible, then we're not in front of our would be clients. And if we're not in front of our would be clients, then our competitors are. When we are struggling with a sense of self-worth and self-value, then we very much retract into ourselves and don't want to be on the stage of big business. So we are, we are allowing others to take center stage while we are in the wings because we haven't got that sense of confidence about who we are, what we have to say, the transformation that we can make for our clients. And the smaller we play, the less visible we are, the less likely we are to attract our ideal clients. So the ripple effect that a, money, that a negative money mindset can have can impact every aspect of our business and prevent us from having the successful business that we wanted to have and why we went into business in the first place. Yeah, and I think a lot of people can relate to it. And I think one of the things that you must witness, in fact, we all must witness, is that when we spend time with someone, we think this person's really got expertise and they've invested hugely in that expertise, yet for some reason they're charging sometimes a tenth of what somebody else might be charging. Um, and maybe a tenth is a little bit of an exaggeration, but certainly could be charging and valuing themselves more. And um, I, mean, I know that, you know, Thomas and I, didn't we? We went through you know our own challenges of that where we had built a big business and it was global but we we were selling the business we were selling a product we weren't really selling ourselves it's very different isn't it when you you go out and you're starting to sell yourself and, and, and is there something that you notice well not just notice for my clients but I can actually say you know I noticed that in myself because you know in my other business so prior to becoming you know a business coach in my other business where we sell ski property and we sell you know a whole gamut from apartments through to very very high-end chalets 
we didn't have to be front and center of our business it was the properties that marketed themselves essentially since coming in and being a business coach I have recognized that if I am not visible, if people are not seeing me, if people don't understand the transformation that I can bring, then I might as well not be a business coach because people will never ever get to know me. It'll be those other people who are making their presence known more, more widely and more strongly. And you know, and in my clients, there has always been a theme of reluctance to want to get visible, they want to, to be behind the scenes, as it were, for fear of what others might say if they do, if they do move to that centre stage. And that mm. is because there is not necessarily a full belief in the value, the experience, the transformation, you know, we can bring. You know, if I, if I look to, and to Lorraine, when Lorraine and I started working, part of the work that we did was to get Loren to really sit down and think about all the value she brings to what she does, the experience that she has, why when she does what she does, she does it with a real detailed and knowledgeable eye. We can take for granted the skill set that we have, we can take for granted how good we are for some, at something, but not only take for granted, we don't necessarily attach a real value to it. It's other people who very often attach a value to something that we can't see. But to be able to spend time actually thinking about what is it? What is the value that I bring? What makes me different? What makes me stand out? What is the transformation I'm gonna bring for my client? What is the results they're going to get as a result of working with me? And I think, you know, I can speak for Lorraine and Lorraine hopefully will, you know, will come on to confirm. Lorraine was able to really see that what she offers, she was not valuing in the way that she, she should have done because she was too internalized to that rather no. than looking at what her clients had to say. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Actually, I think you segued brilliantly there into uh, Lorraine. Would you tell us a little bit about your story then, and and what's happened over this last ten weeks with with Leslie? Yes, uh, gladly. So, thank you for inviting me onto your uh, your show. So, I started uh, the ten week process with Leslie and it was really interesting the exercises that she uh, proposed to do during the during the course there were exercises on what can what do you actually give to a client and when I started to list all of those out which in actual fact after some help with Leslie because she's very hands-on and if you get a little stuck she's able to really help help the process along without without leading you, you were able to be introspective and think about it. Uh, it flowed and there were so many things and I thought, gosh, uh, I hadn't actually noticed that or analyzed it before. You know, when a client comes to me and they want a, a logo or they want some business cards designing and printing, I, I do it without even thinking and I, uh, they're over the moon but I I don't value it because I haven't really looked at it in that in that way before so it was a, a, a very eye-opening experience for me and and you know what's changed from before and after for you from um, well before I uh, as I said I didn't really value or didn't really think about my skill sets in that sort of way and then after the exercises I was able to uh, to really value what I was giving that client and and uh, Leslie, during one of our coaching sessions, had a wonderful saying about Picasso and he was in a cafe and uh, he was scribbling on a little napkin. And a client came in or uh, of the cafe place and they came in and they looked at the scribble and looked at it and thought, oh, that's fantastic. Went up to Picasso and said, oh, can I buy it? And uh, he said, well, well, can you hold on a minute, please? Uh, about 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes to finish it. Anyway, 
when he had finished, he called the lady over and uh, she said, OK, brilliant. Um, and how much is it? And he said, it's £30,000. And she said, what? £30,000? But it's just taking you 10 minutes to finish it. And he said, I've been doing this for 30 years and that has enabled me to finish this in 10 minutes. And, and really, that was the epiphany moment for me because I, I thought, oh, yes, I get it. I get it. And, and that was that. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a very powerful story that Leslie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah super. And, um, you know, sometimes you just have to have that awareness. So, Mindy, it's wonderful to see you here. And as I said at the top of the show, you know, I've always I've always observed over the what 15 years you having you know, a phenomenal business mind and uh, really dedicated to your clients and everything. But you say you've had your own sort of money journey. Are that, would you be willing to share some of that with us? Sure. Well, thanks again for uh, having this interesting conversation and including me in it. I, um, I don't actually see myself as brilliant with money. I see myself as pretty good with business and I do run my businesses uh, consciously and profitably. But my journey, it took me a long time to 7x <laughs> my uh, rates. Um, they've probably 20x, but it's taken 20 years. I was very slow. I, I see myself as a risk taker, um, but there was something very risky I saw in raising my prices. And it probably was to do with, you know, not having enough confidence, but it, it, I thought, no, 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 I'm really confident. So I, I've arrived where I have um, through a lot of trials and tribulations. And I have had clients say to me in the past, oh, that's cheap, I mean, not recently, but it's interesting when a, you know, a savvy client says, oh, you know, that seems a bit cheap because they've been quoted higher. And I don't like the word cheap, you know, it goes with nasty, <laughs> cheap and nasty, and that's not me. So things like that have kind of spurred me on. And um, yeah, I guess when you get more and more experience, you get more confidence, but it would have been great if I had been able to uh, you know, raise my fees a bit faster. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? And I think it really reflects, um, it reflects the reality of what we, how we perceive ourselves and what the perception is from the outside. It's very interesting, isn't it? When, and I think we all suffer that. So there's our identity and how we come across and then there's how we feel inside ourselves. And, and Leslie, is that something that when you're working with people, you're, you become really aware of? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You know, I read a book recently that talked about confidence over competence and actually very often the most successful people are those that have real confidence over their level of competence and you know a big reason why I've chosen to work with female entrepreneurs is very often they don't lack the business skills they don't lack the ability to create a successful business. What they lack is that confidence to take it to the next stage. So they get so far, they reach that glass revenue ceiling in their business and they don't know how to push through it. They think there is a silver bullet that is going to provide them with the tools to break through it when actually they have the tools inside them. It is how they are valuing themselves and having the confidence in themselves to increase their prices, put packages in place, become better at putting boundaries in place. Because again, a lack of confidence very often leads to not putting those really firm boundaries in place and people will take advantage. People will take advantage in so many ways, you know, not paying, um, paying for your services on time underpaying for your services, you discounting your services, cancelling appointments just before you were due to meet, overrunning for appointments, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So those boundaries are really, really important. But also looking at the results you're bringing for your clients and being really happy to shout about the results you're bringing for your clients, rather than hiding away and being embarrassed 
about blowing your own trumpet because that's what marketing is. Marketing is about blowing your company's trumpet. But when you are the CEO of your own business, and it doesn't matter how big or small that business is, but when you are CEO and you are responsible for the results, you have to be comfortable and confident in talking about what you do, how you do it, and the results that you bring. And for women in particular, of course it affects men, but women are not naturally confident. But confidence is a skill that you can learn and get better at. But when you tie everything directly to your self-worth and your self-value and you hide away from what innately is within you, that is when you will reach a glass ceiling that you can't get beyond. But once you start to realize that actually you can turn around everything you've thought that you can't do, that you actually can do, that is how you break through that glass ceiling. So you, you mentioned the male and female things. Thomas has got something to say, because it's quite interesting to see if it's different perspectives, isn't it? Yeah, ladies, uh, it's a question to you all, really. But it's, it took me decades in business to have confidence in my competence, to use that phrase. But I would say I didn't really have it until my 50s. How long, how many years went by before you had, or what age were you when you had confidence in your competence? Well, I've been fortunate, uh, and Penny and I have had this conversation. The reason I do what I do, um, and why I work with female entrepreneurs, and, um, and why I work from the perspective of money mindset, first of all, is because I am aware of the direct link to your confidence to do with your money mindset and the value you place on yourself. I am really fortunate that my mother, very, very kind of um, typical Welsh mother, she was the matriarch. My mum would not allow me to put any obstacle in my way, basically, any limitations on myself. So I've told Penny the story before. I was only going to do two A-levels. My mother said, absolutely no way, you're doing three. I was only going to go to college, not university. My mother, absolutely, Leslie, you're not. The only place you're going to is university. So my mother, from a very young age, got me to realise that I was placing obstacles in my way and limiting my opportunity. Because of my mother, I have never, ever lacked confidence, but I have had to work at my competence. Working at my competence has certainly brought up imposter syndrome, and it's brought, brought up imposter syndrome like never, ever, ever that it has the last 12 months. Being in the space, and since the pandemic, making it so easy to connect with people globally and being on the likes of Clubhouse, et cetera, et cetera, you are exposed to lots of people who know lots more than you do. So I've had to do a lot of inner work to realize every day I am better than I was the day before. Next week, I will be better than I was the week before. But because I have that now sense of maturity, et cetera, I realize what is going on, but I definitely had confidence, but I've had to work on my own competence in order for that imposter syndrome to not keep rearing its ugly head. So, so you're also saying your 50s, Liz? Yeah, that's true. Well, yes and no, because obviously I ch I've changed careers. So I became a coach at 51. So I'm 53 now, just 53 now. So I, so I was very, when I was in corporate and in my other job, when I was running the back office for our, our property business, confidence and competence, but they were in a box. They were in a box. I'd reached my upper limit. I'd reached my upper limit in terms of how far I thought I could go. What I, I have done now, and it's a brilliant book by Gay Hendricks called The Big Leap. What I've, I have done now is pushed through my upper limit. And when you push through your upper limit, that is when all of that stuff, 
rears up. So it's possibly a coincidence that I'm in my 50s, but actually I think as well, the fact I've changed, completely changed what I do, that has brought up things I hadn't expected or known would come up. Okay, so, so same question to Mindy and Loren. Okay, the same question. I was in my 40s and Thomas, you witnessed it. So I knew that I had a great skill to help people get a book out of their head and finished and into print. So I just did that kind of like what Loren was saying before. That's yeah, I can do it. I just did it without valuing it enough maybe. And then I was lucky. I would say lucky. Um, I was running the, my business. I wasn't charging enough. And two things happened. Number one, uh, by circumstances, I became the main breadwinner in our family. So I had to step up. And number two, I, I engineered a meeting with a really, really big entrepreneur who we all know and had a partnership with him and his company for five years. And just having his confidence in me I just had to match it. So that I would say that's luck, although I really nagged him until we had the partnership. And then, you know, he wheeled me onto stages and he, you know, promoted me and he and his team, you know, told the world that how great we were. And, and that allowed me to use that, that borrowed confidence. And then once that was there, it, it didn't slip down. So, you know, I was, I'm very, very grateful for that. Maybe I would have done it myself, but you know, those two things made me step it up. And, and that was, I think I was 43, something like that. That is really powerful story that Mindy, because you call it a partnership. You know, some people get agents. You know, I remember when I got a speaking agent and suddenly they're promoting you and selling you. And it's a really good tip for people that as well, actually. And uh, I, I, know, I know exactly what you're saying there because that's back to, Oh, I think my internet's gone slow, but that's back to that challenge of selling ourselves and believing in ourselves and having that confidence, isn't it? And and so Thomas, do you want to ask the same question as of, of Loren? L Loren, so the reminder of the question is: it took me decades to have confidence in my competence in my fifties. Min Mindy's saying forty-three. Leslie's saying fifty-three. I'm saying fifties. What are you saying, Loren? I'm saying 60s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I um, I uh, became the uh, breadwinner. <laughs> and um, I also decided to move countries as well. So I uh, work, my business is based in the UK, but I choose to work in France as it helps me more creatively I think the environment for to be a, a graphic designer you are really touched by circumstances where you live all sorts of things mess with you in order to be creative and um, so it, it helps with that if I'm in a block I can just go out, walk, look at the mountains, come back and I'm refreshed and I can restart the, the process. Um, I had a big corporate life in London, working for Christie's, working for Shell, people like that, doing what I do, Nissan, Porsche, etc. And And then when I started my business 17 years ago, I, I just continued doing what I did. And so I suppose in one sense, half of my mind was in a corporate, so therefore you never get thanked. Or it's not really <laughs> a big deal if you do anything because you're paid for that. So, and uh, you just continue on that rhythm. And, and I, for me, I think it was meeting Leslie, really. And, and Leslie putting me through that, making me face those things and asking me very deep questions about my business, which, you know, was fully established. I've been in business for 17 years, um, but it was her putting it in such a way uh, that I thought, oh, 
actually, yeah, uh, think about all this experience of working in London for these huge corporates. And that, for me, I'm, I'm ever so grateful for having done that, because with all that experience, I can now pass that on to smaller uh, businesses and give them the knowledge of a very, very heavy corporate background, which floats my boat. So, Lorraine, should we call Leslie the how to raise your prices coach? <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, how to understand absolutely. the process. <laughs> it just does show that, you know, why one to one coaching is so powerful in these things, because everybody has their past experience. You know, um, Leslie, you talked about your phenomenal parents and how they always believed in you, whereas others of us have had other life experiences as children that have affected our self-worth and our belief in ourselves um, and I loved also that you talked about us setting up boundaries a bit around us in business and uh, I'd love you to expand a bit about on that because I think um, to me there's all you know self-worth is a digger deep digger deeper dive into someone but actually, you know, when somebody introduced me to boundaries and the first time somebody said to me, you haven't got boundaries, Penny, I said, I have. I've got a fence all the way around my garden. I couldn't understand. I didn't I have no idea what they meant by boundaries, uh, personal boundaries. It was I mean, literally, it was about five years ago I learned about that you should have boundaries. Um, so do you want to just embellish a little bit about, you know, four or five of the type of boundaries we should have when we're in business to help us with our money mindset? Nope, oh, you're muted. You. Apologies, I should have realised that. Um, I think a lot of people don't make the connection between confidence and boundaries. And also a lot of people don't have the ability to correctly set boundaries that doesn't make it feel like they are bullying the other person. So it is quite a skill, but it's a skill that you can again learn and develop. Now, in business, it is about ensuring that both the client and the person delivering the coaching, delivering the service, knows what is expected of them, because it is a two-way relationship. It isn't just about the coach, in my case, delivering the, the teaching, the training, the transformation. It is about that other person paying me for those results, but we have an agreement to turn up on a particular day at a particular time to do the work that's required to turn off your phone, to pay on time, to give that time that we are together your real detailed thought and attention and to be honest. And as a coach, I have a commitment to ensure that everything that is shared with me is done confidentially, is done without judgment, is done in a way that brings the client towards the result that they're paying me for. It's not about overstepping and becoming a friend or becoming somebody who doesn't want to hurt the other person's feelings because a too delicate in the coaching relationship, then you're not going to allow that person to have the realizations that they need to have. Because coaching isn't about telling, coaching isn't about me providing the answers. It is about the other person, my client, realizing within themselves what they need to do to move themselves forward. And it's having respect, it's having respect for my time my clients having respect for their and my time, for everybody to understand what is in that explicit and implicit contract. And I always put a contract in place with my clients, not because I feel you need to have that process because there's that, there's that legal boundary, but it's because everybody knows what's expected of them and it sets that relationship yeah, on the right foot. So for yeah. me, Having boundaries is all about respecting yourself and your client and that relationship. Yeah. And in fact, in BIP 100, you know, we always say when we do our coaching onboarding, you know, just because you're joining a, a, a group of people that are going to care and love one another doesn't mean to say you should be giving your advice away for free. Some friendly support is very different to starting to go into a consultation where you're 
becoming a client supplier relationship that's building up resentment because nobody's paying you. And I think that's a boundary that sometimes can be blurred when you go into networks as well. So who of us, put our hands up, have given away our time for free and given advice, not compassionately because somebody's in a terrible place, but just because they've almost felt manipulated into it or they've just not had the boundaries. Who of us have given time away for free? I did. Yeah, yeah. So, Mindy, do you want to sort of get, get, tell us how you handle that when somebody comes to you? And I know, uh, my goodness, uh, with the ex expertise you have around publishing and all the people that think they've got a book inside them, how do you manage that yourself? So I have um, done a couple of things. Leslie mentioned the word packages, and that was a, a lifesaver. So when you, if you charge by the hour, it's very, you know, I used to do that. It was open-ended. It was, you know, nobody could have a handle on how much they were going to pay, invest, sorry. Um, and so <laughs> then the packages, I just thought I, I need it for my own sanity. And then so many people ask you, I'm sure we've all had this, what do you charge or what are your fees or what? And so I can go boom, 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 you know, 5K, 7K, 10K. And I've... That's a little trick I learned as well from uh, someone who's really successful in business. If you say 10K is, is a short little phrase, it sounds so innocent. It sounds as opposed to $10,000. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can all have yeah. that for free, guys. Um, so I have spoken to Leslie about this because I am nice and I'm very good at what I do. I have that competence. I have a lot of confidence and I'm nice. I'm thoughtful, I'm, I, I'm caring. And if somebody comes, and maybe I'm not a good judge of character, but sometimes people come to me and they give me the sob story and um, I'm a single mom and, and, and I haven't worked for six months and, and, and. And, it, and it's my discretion. And I have given discounts, I hate to, but you know, a special price, let's say, because I choose to. And, and when I make a decision, I'm just one of these people, I don't look back and regret it. Once I make that decision, I say, I take complete responsibility. I chose to do that. But it kind of sits with you, doesn't it? And you think, OK, I, I chose to do that. I made that decision. Mm, but maybe the next time when it comes up, I'll be wiser. And I won't necessarily just say. So instead, Leslie actually helped me with this. I called her in a panic about a month ago because I had three people all giving me stories. And these are people who committed to doing my program. My program only has eight to 12 participants in it. I need to know who's taking part in the group program. And if three of them flake out, you know, I can't replace them quick enough. So I had three people giving me a story and oh yes, I'm definitely gonna do your book coaching program, but da, da, da. And so then she said, well, you know, what are some of the things that you can do um, and you don't necessarily have to discount, you know, can you help them spread the payments? Can you, you know, help them in some other way? And it really has helped. Um, so mm. at the moment, I think I only have one uh, person who's not paid an invoice. And I feel better about it because I don't want to discount because it, it, like I said, it makes me feel cheap and nasty. That's my story. Yeah. Yeah, well, you are someone full of integrity, so Mindy, and your credibility is really high. I'm sure you handle those things really well. Um, so, I mean, this whole thing about free advice and having the boundaries around it, yeah, we can be really kind, but also what Mindy indicated there, Leslie, is this whole thing about very clear pricing and make it sound very confident when you put it across. And that sounds like something that you've um, experienced, Lauren, as you've looked at how do you increase your prices um, but one of the things I'm really curious Lauren is in your world it's a quite an ambiguous experience isn't it in the creative world in agency creativity because you are relying on the contract with a client being that they will show up on time that they won't mess you around that they will preview the, the, the you know they'll look at your um when you show them the graphics that you've created, they'll give you feedback on time. You don't want project creep. Is that something around boundaries that you've found is quite tough? 
I uh, that can be very tough. It can, particularly when. So uh, I had a, an example of that where a client really needed some work doing. They wanted some business cards printing and some other things printing very very quickly, but. Uh, the project was held up purely because they wouldn't commit. They wouldn't commit to maybe making a change. I made a change. I immediately said it, sent it back because I was very, very mindful that the client needed these. And I knew and had warned them that they take a long time to print because it's, you know, I'm having them, they were being, the paper was actually being handmade at the factory. So it wasn't just going to a printer and printing these easily. They were very, very specialized things. And so therefore, when they start to be specialized that, like that, it takes, a, it takes easily two weeks. And so I was very, very mindful of that. And I chased the client all the time, actually. I was relentless. <laughs> because I didn't want them to be disappointed at the end because they didn't get the project uh, on time, even though it was their fault. Uh, I just thought it was easier to just chase them. <laughs> and that's how I, I can be very dogmatic on things like that, actually. Yeah, Maybe good. not that's not good. dogmatic. I mean, I had a lot of empathy with Mindy about the giving of advice. I do it all the time. I just, mm. I can't help it because when Leslie and I, we did our, my profile, I'm a giver and God am I a giver. Yeah, <laughs> it's just natural. It's awful. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Uh, I don't feel too bad about it. I feel quite good about that. Yeah, actually. I mean, we have depends to on how much. Yeah, we have to live with ourselves. If we are naturally caring and giving and compassionate yeah. and thoughtful, as Mindy says, we don't want to. We don't want to just become a dispassionate business person, no, no. you know, do we? So it is finding no, 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 that no. balance where we can live with ourselves. Yeah. And I know so many yeah. people said you should charge more for your mentoring, Penny. I said, but then I wouldn't be attracting the sort of people I want to mentor because they wouldn't be able to afford it. And I know the sort of people I really want to help. And so it's about finding finding yeah. the right balance of you know yeah. I'm, I'm not interested in being for example you know one of these people that said I can make you a seven figure millionaire you know in in 12 weeks and but I'm going to charge you 20,000 pounds it's not me you know so no, we I, have totally, to find... I totally empathize with that I yeah. really do it I is. can't it's... do that as well then it's just not who I want yeah. to be it's not how I want to show up in the world so I think this is the thing isn't it Leslie is it's knowing yourself and knowing you who you want to be and what sort of clients you want to attract. I want to ask before, because my goodness, we've only got three minutes left. Leslie, Lorraine mentioned your profiling, and I think this is fantastic. And I would love to give everybody an opportunity to go to um, where you, people can find out, can't they, what their, their there's, a, there's something you do with clients, isn't it, to find out yeah. about their their money profile or something isn't it that's right so they're, they're, they're money archetypes essentially so there's 12 sorry there's eight money archetypes and we're all made up of three of those archetypes and it's those archetypes that control our relationship with money and when we have challenges with money it's because our archetypes are not sitting very naturally uh, with each other when you understand what your archetypes are so for example Lorraine has said her main archetype is nurturer. And that means she's very much about, you know, looking after people, providing for people. When you understand that, and you can understand that in caring for people, in providing funding for people, actually what you were doing, you were disa disabling them from becoming independent. So you think you're looking after them, you're not, you're creating a dependency. So what you can do instead is look for other ways to support them, you know, be a shoulder for them to lean on, be a sounding board for them to come to. So by understanding what your archetypes are, rather than just accepting oh that's the way that I am I can't change actually you can change when you are informed about what is going on for yourself with regards to that relationship with money I normally only do it as part of my coaching program what I decided to do because there was so much interest 
in people knowing what their archetypes are, I developed a little pop-up product, as it were. So if people want to message me on LinkedIn, seeing we're on LinkedIn, if you want to message me on LinkedIn, I'll provide you with the link so that you are able to do the assessment. And then I will either give you one-to-one -one feedback over Zoom, and that's priced at £99, or I'll record you a video um, of what your archetypes are, what the challenges are, what the gifts are, et cetera, and what they mean for you, and that's £49. So please just message me directly into the DMs on LinkedIn, and I will send you the link, basically. But it's a really, really useful thing to know because all of a sudden you are in charge of your relationship with money rather than money being in charge of you basically yeah. what a brilliant show and leslie what brilliant people you invited on here um, the fantastic uh, stories um, sharing empathy a great chat show i hope some people will maybe will watch this back on we put it onto the youtube channel and share it with people that they know might be having some of these challenges just to know that it's normal to feel this way and that you can get help and yeah. um you know we've talked about so many things um self-worth boundaries you know i love you know mindy when you talked about make you know you went into a partnership that helped you to believe in yourself you said you borrowed their confidence in you i thought that was really good confidence and competence yeah uh, confidence and competence you yep i love that i was i i didn't have to answer that question so i think i might be still looking for that um we talked about uh the free advice that uh we can fall into uh, and these and these whole as i said the boundaries around how we make sure that we really respect ourselves so leslie you do have a website what is the url for your website so it's www.lesleyathomas.com. So it's lesleyathomas.com. Fantastic. And that wonderful um, offer of doing your, um, your archetype profiling by sending you a message on LinkedIn is brilliant. Um, bless you all. Thank you so much for your time and for enriching Thank people you. that have listened to this. Really enjoyed it. Next week, we've got Dipti Tate. And uh, Dipti is going to, she's actually being joined by um, one of her clients who is suffering grief and she's been helping her through it, who lost both her parents through um, COVID. Um, and um, she's got another guest that we're really looking forward to meeting as well. And we're going to be talking about grief and it's many forms because grief comes from anything that we've lost. It can be emptiness grief. It can be the loss of a house, the loss of a job, loss of a pet, uh, loss of confidence, loss, you know, self-doubt, all these things. So we're going to be getting deep, deep, deep into that subject with Dipti Tate. Thank you so much, Leslie, for being our, thank you. our key guest. And thank you so much, Lorraine and Mindy, for supporting this and, and sharing your stories. And loads of love to you all. Thank you, guys. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.